Hey everybody, welcome back to another coding video. I just want to say thank you before we get started to all of the subscribers. I've reached over 400 subscribers now, and I appreciate all of you that have subscribed. Don't forget to do that if you haven't already. That way you don't miss learning new things as I do when I share them with you. And uh, that's all this channel is. It's me learning new technologies, new coding practices, new frameworks, whatever and sharing them with you guys. But today we're gonna to talk about MVC, ASP.NET MVC, and using the HTML helper and creating strongly typed forms. So real quick, what is an HTML helper? You might've heard of that before, maybe not. Uh, the HTML helper, as I like to describe it, is basically just some C-sharp that you can place in a razor page in a view, in MVC, and it turns that C sharp into an actual HTML control. For example, uh, if you did at the at sign HTML.textbox, it would create this as an HTML control as it's rendering it. And basically what we're going to do is something very similar to, it looks like this tutorialsteacher.com. We're going to pass in a model into our view, or at least the type of model, what kind of model it is. And then we're going to use a Lambda expression to say, hey, for this display name for, we're going to reference uh, model.studentName. And then this, we're going to reference model.age. So if you didn't see my last video, I talked about how to just use a regular HTML form. We're not using C Sharp in my last video. And just to show you what it currently looks like, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to recreate this, but in a different way with those HTML helpers. So here it is, here's the basic form. You can see it's in Bootstrap. And that's something we're going to have to play around with with the HTML helper is how do we add classes? Because if we look back, let's close this. Um, you can see there's no actual class given here. It's basically going to be a very you know rudimentary text box without any styling. All right, so in the last video we created, or not really created a controller, we just added to the existing home controller. And I, I added a new, method called add user, which took in a name and an age from the form. And then what we were doing is we we're placing it into another model that we created called the user data model or user data class. And so basically what I want to do is I want to add another HTTP, HTTP post method that handles HTTP post requests with this method name. Let's do public void instead of add user because we're not going to accept a string name and an integer age. In fact, we're just going to take in an object of type user data. So that's what I want to do. So we're going to say add user two, and then this is going to be of type user data, and then we can call it lowercase user data. Okay, and then this is going to do something. Uh, we can say like console dot write line or write, even though this really isn't going to write anywhere. Uh, user data dot name. Okay, so we have our controller worked out. We have this new uh, method in our controller called add user two. And basically all we have to do now is go back to our CS HTML and we're going to recreate this form, but using those HTML helpers. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to comment this out Okay, and what we might want to do is tell the razor page here, hey, what kind of model are we going to use? So I'm going to say at the very top at and then lowercase model. And this is where we're going to reference our user data class. So this project's called YouTube demo web app and then dot models and then dot user data is the type of model that we're going to be using in this page. So now if I wanted to, I could do model dot and then you can see that IntelliSense says oh well for that model there's an age attribute and a name attribute and it knows this because we defined it up here at the top so to create our form I'm just going to use a using statement so at using and then let me zoom in by the way I'm not sure how easy this is to see hopefully that helps so we're going to be using HTML dot begin form this is going to take in some arguments. And this one is the particular method that we're looking for. So the first parameter is action name, the second one's controller name, and the last one is the method. So in our case, it's going to be a post method. So the action name is add user two. 
like we named it. And then controller name is the home controller. Hopefully I don't misspell any of these. And then it's going to be for method dot post for our last. Okay. So what we're going to use the HTML helper is to replace this part, but the rest I'm going to keep. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing and we're still going to have a label and it's still going to say name. Um, and we're still going to have the outside div, but instead we're going to do at HTML dot text box for text box for why is my caps lock on? There we go. And then we can say we want this one for M M dot name. And that's where it's going to place this data in the M dot name attribute of this object. And I'm going to space this a little better. Well, no, I don't have to space it. Actually, I need to remove this line now because that's going to replace it. Okay. And so basically I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to copy this div. I'm going to paste it. And we're going to keep the label. Um, we're just going to replace that input and kill that now. Instead of m.name, it's going to be m.h. So let's see how this looks. It's going to look pretty basic because we haven't assigned a class to this bootstrap class just yet. And there we go. You can see it's not styled the same as it was before. And also we don't have a submit button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that running and then I'm just going to add a button of type submit and it's just going to say submit. So now if I bring this back over and we refresh, there we go, but it's also not very styled. Um, so we can add class is btn and then btn dash primary. We'll save that refresh and now at least the button looks like it did before with the bootstrap styling. It's just however these aren't. So what we can actually do to this is add a second parameter which is going to be an anonymous type. An anonymous type is basically, no, it's not going to be string. Okay, and I couldn't well define anonymous types here. They do a pretty good job. Anonymous type provides a convenient way to encapsulate a set of read-only properties into a single object without having to explicitly define a type first. So you can think of it as a collection of read-only strings um, or whatever. So this is basically just going to hold the HTML that we would see in here. And in order to say class and to not get it confused with a C-sharp class, we're going to do add class, which is going to equal form control control there we go okay and we can also add a placeholder here placeholder is going to equal name and i think these are the only two i care about so what we can do is we can actually copy this and paste it here however we don't need a placeholder in this one because if you remember I need to put a comma. If you remember, this one is going to be of type number. And if we look, it's not. You can see 21 ASDF. It takes ASDF. So it's not of type number. It takes um, actual characters that aren't numeric. So what we can do is we can change that to type with a lowercase t is equal to number. So we'll save. And let's see if this looks any better. I just refreshed. And you can see now these have the up and down arrows, which denote that it's now a number. And I bet if I tried to add a, yeah, it won't let me. But if I had 21, it will. Then if I add the name Joe and I hit submit, um, actually, I don't think we put a breakpoint. So let's go back to our controller and let's put a breakpoint right here. And I'll hit submit. Okay, so it was messing it up. I think I put home controller instead of just home. We don't need to add the controller part. Let's recompile this and try submitting that form again. So let's put Joe and let's put 21. Submit. And yeah, it made it to the add user to uh, action or, or method. And right now it's wanting to put Joe with the user dot name because that's what we said it to go to M dot name. Okay, so this is kind of a cleaner way, I think, of 
passing data from the view back to the controller is through some kind of model. Because when it becomes such a big form, can you imagine having, you know, 15 different questions on a form, which is normal, I think, and having to pass in 15, you know, parameters into our method and having to keep track, make sure you got every single one correct rather than just one object, or one instance of a class, right? This way it's a lot easier. Um, to not mess up. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like I said, if you like this kind of content. And I hope to see you in the next video. So I'm having fun with MVC. I'm still learning. Uh, I think we're going to have a demo project in the future that we'll work on together. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. So look forward to that.